for the best medical and paramedical lectures subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to stay connected with us hi guys myself memonaksa today we learn about anatomy of the breast and physiology of lactation so let's begin learning outcomes describe the gross and microscopic structure of the breast explain the physiology of lactation and then explain factors essential for maintenance of lactation so first the breast the breast are also known as a mammary glands and they are granular tissues stimulated by increase in female hormones at puberty during pregnancy and lactation periods they are regarded as accessory glands of the female reproductive system so the breast is the tissue overlying the chest muscles women's breast are made of specialized tissue that produce milk as well as fatty tissues the amount of fat determines the size of the breast the milk producing part of the breast is organized into 15 to 20 sections called lobes then situation one breast is situ situated on each side of the sternum and extends from the level of the second to the sixth rib they lie in superficial fascia of the chest wall over the pectoralis major muscles held in position by suspensory ligament of copper then shape hemispherical has a tail of tissue extending towards the axilla tail of spencer then size varies with different individuals and with the stage of development and age the external shape uh, the external shape or size of the breast is not predictive of the its internal anatomy nor of its lactational potential next gross structure of the breast skin the breast is covered with skin and subcutaneous tissue at the center around the nipple the covering consists of primary areola which is specialized form of skin then axillary tail a tissue extending towards the axilla then areola a circular of loose pigment skin about 2.5 cm in diameter found at the center of each breast pale pink in fair skinned woman and darker in dark woman color depends with pregnancy approx to 20 sebaceous glands within each areola then nipple lies in the center of the areola it's at the level of fourth rib about 6 mm in length composed of pigment erectile tissue highly sensitive has nerve endings surface of nipple is performed by small orifice opening of lactiferous ducts so lactiferous ducts are those ducts that converge and form a branched system connecting the nipple to the lobules of the mammary glands when lactogenesis occur under the influence of hormones the milk is moved to the nipple by the action of smooth muscles contraction along the ductal system to the tip of the nipple next microscopic structure of the breast largely composed of glandular and fatty tissue covered with skin glandular tissue is divided into 15 to 20 lobe in each breast completely separated by bands of fibrous tissue each lobe is made up of 40 tiny lobules which are connected together to form ducts by loose connective internal structure resemble half grapefruit or orange each lobe is a separated functional unit composed of alveoli lactiferous tubes ampulla continuation of lactiferous ducts 
Each lobule consists of a rounded cluster of between 10 and 100 specialized alveoli called acne cells which are secretory units of the glands. The alveoli have epithelial cells which manufacture colostrum during pregnancy up to third day postpartum. The alveoli open up to tiny ducts which unite to form larger ducts known as a lactiferous ducts. See the microscopic structure of the breast. Then fibrous tissue, fascia of which the breast rest and send out extension in the form of fiber. Fibrous process is called suspensory ligaments of copper. From the black of the breast forwards to the subcutaneous tissue underlying the skin and nipple. This supports the breast. then breast profile a show the ducts b lobules c dilated section of ducts to hold milk d nipple e fat f pectoralis major muscles g chest wall rib cage and last ment then a normal duct cells b basement membrane and c lumen center of ducts then alveoli hollow cavities of few millimeters large line with milk secreting cuboidal cells and surrounded by myoepithelial cells this alveoli join up to form groups known as a lobules the myoepithelial cells can contact under the stimulation of oxytocin thereby extracting the milk from glands through the lactiferous ducts toward the nipple then blood supply internal and external memory artery upper intercostal arteries venous drainage by corresponding vessels into the internal memory and axillary veins then lymphatic drainage into axillary glands mediastinum nodes and portal fissures of the liver lymphatic vessels of the two breast communicate with each other then now supply function of the breast are controlled by hormones skin is supplied by branches of thoracic nerve and sympathetic nerve around the areola and nipple then function supplying milk for the infant sexual organ this all explain about anatomy of the breast now we will see the physiology of the lactation During pregnancy several hormones develop the breast and stimulate secretion of the colostrum estrogen progesterone and prolactin associated with neonatal feeding with high levels produced during the during night feeds physiology of lactation hormonal control production of milk flow of milk big pressure neurohormonal and reflex so the normal physiology of lactation is a process that begins to take effect well before the initial lact of the newborn infant it required the breast to change in composition size and shape during each stage of female development includes puberty pregnancy and lactation so first hormonal control Separation and exclusion of placenta leads to repro- uh, reduction in circulation of estrogen and progesterone, resulting in release of prolactin by anterior pituitary gland. Estrogen suppresses action of prolactin, promotes production of milk three days after delivery, after allowing adequate amount of circulating prolactin. Prolactin acts on the acne milk protein. producing cells thus if suppression of milk is required estrogen can be administered example still uh, still boosterol then milk production increased blood supply to the breast brings important nutrient for milk production milk is formed as small fatty globules within the cytoplasm of the secreting cells of the alveoli Globules arise in the base of this cell and gradually unite to form small droplet.
As new globules are produced, the proplet are pushed towards the surface of the cell unital they burst. Through cell membranes, they enter the lactiferous tubules accompanied by a little cytoplasm of the cell substance. They join with top droplet from other cells and the terminal portion of the tubules within the excitating alveoli become filled with milk. Milk is formed from a volume of blood about 350 times greater than that of the milk produced. Composition of milk is depend on the metabolism of the alveolar cells which make the nutrient from amino acid and glucose. Mother's diet does not affect composition of milk except if she takes large quantities of vitamin and fats. Next, flow of milk. Two factors are involved in the passage of milk from secretory cells to the nipple. First, back pressures. Force of new globules forming in the cells pushed the foremost ones into the lactiferous tubules to lactiferous ducts and store in the ampullae. Next, second neurohormonal reflex. Rhythmic suction movements empties the ampullae. Large lactiferous ducts cause myoepithelial cells surrounding alveoli and smaller ducts to contact and pour more milk toward the nipple. Stimulus on the sensitive nipples, crying of baby or just the thought of the baby reaches the hypothalamus by nose reflex oxytocin is released from posterior lobe of the pituitary glands. Oxytocin stimulated myoepithelial cells of the breast and nipple to contact causing more sensation felt in both breasts referred to as drought. Oxytocin also stimulates the uterus to contact causing pain while breastfeeding promoting involution of uterus. Let down reflex can be inhibited by pain, fear or embarrassment therefore ensure pain free during BF breastfeeding. Then milk withdrawal. A vacuum is created in the baby's mouth which helps draw more milk from the lactiferous sinuses. As milk is drawn from the sinuses and the lower ducts more milk flow down from the upper lactiferous duct, tubules and alveoli to take its place discontinue until the breast is emptied. The neonate grabs the whole nipple and the primary areola are drawn into the baby's mouth. The neonate closes its jaws into the areola tissue situated over the lactiferous sinuses. This expresses milk from the sinuses into the baby's mouth to mouth who then swallows. Then mechanism of controlling lactation and milk ejection. Last point, the pyramid below illustrates how lactation is controlled and ejected. Follow the numbers from top to left side and top to right side. Thank you. Do like, leave a comment and share with your friends.